In this lesson, we'll learn about the law of definite proportions. Question 1 reads, two samples of carbon dioxide are decomposed into their constituent elements. One sample produces 25.6 grams of oxygen and 9.60 grams of carbon, and the other produces 21.6 grams of oxygen and 8.10 grams of carbon. Show that these results are consistent with the law of definite proportions. The law of definite proportions tells us that in any sample of a chemical compound, in our case it's carbon dioxide, the elements are always combined in the same proportion by mass. Now to show that these results are consistent with this law, we have to calculate the mass ratio of one element to the other for both samples by dividing the mass of one element by the mass of the other. If the ratios are the same for both of these samples, then these results are consistent with the law of definite proportions. So let's get started. What I'll do is compare the mass of oxygen to the mass of carbon dioxide in sample one. Mass of oxygen to the mass of carbon. We're told that the mass of oxygen is 25.6 grams and the mass of carbon is 9.60. Let's divide 25.6 by 9.60. That gives us 8 over 3. 8 over 3. Now let's find the ratio for the second sample. We have 21.6 grams over 8.10 grams using our calculator. 21.6 divided by 8.10. This gives us 8 over 3. Therefore, this proves the law of definite proportions. Let's move on to question 2. Two samples of carbon monoxide are decomposed into their constituent elements. One sample produces 17.2 grams of oxygen and 12.9 grams of carbon, while the other sample produces 10.5 grams of oxygen and 7.88 grams of carbon show that these results are consistent with the law of definite proportions. Once again, we'll be using the exact same logic as in question one. And without doing any writing, I'll just show you on the calculator. We have 17.2. I'm going to divide the mass of oxygen over the mass of carbon dioxide. And I should also get 4 over 3 for the next sample. 10.5 divided by 7.88. This gives us the following, which is equivalent to 1.33. Now if I divide 4 over 3 and find its decimal number, I also get 1.33. Now I do understand that there is a slight discrepancy. This one is exactly 1 and a third, whereas the other one is slightly off. Remember that these values are measured values. So there's always room for error while you're taking the measurements. So we'll assume that's the cause of this discrepancy.